Hey guys, no gym needed here. We're going to talk about solo leveling. Uh, just drank a potion. Got to get my mana back up, you know. My HP. So, man. Oh. Yo, I don't know where to start. So check this out. From my last video, I had this little part on this piece of paper that I didn't put into the video and it almost predicted what we know now at chapter 219. So check it out. <laughs> I'm talking about like what is the fragment of the most brilliant light. It's when we first heard about it and more or less so alright let me just show you here. So what is the fragment of the most brilliant light? I put two possible conclusions. One, it could be a prophecy relating to some kind of prophecy and it was having its fulfillment in something. I didn't really think much of that one. Then my second theory was it's a spirit that has powers of sovereigns or rulers. Maybe only half their powers though because the Shadow Sovereign and Jin Wu exist together. But maybe the Shadow Sovereign can now only exist in the atypical chaos world and Jin Wu can only exist in the human world unless they fully merge. So, that was right. Bas that was right. Not even basically, that was straight up right. And I should have put this in my video, but whatever. I had no reason to lie to you guys. My videos get like 20 views at the most, so you can uh, you can bet I'm not lying. So, And right below that, I have the most brilliant light. Maybe the origin of both the sovereigns and the rulers. Maybe they come from the same thing. Can you believe that? I totally called it. And I didn't even put it in there. Man. It's like... It would have been cooler if I put it in there, but who cares? I, I wrote it down, so I'm stoked. I had it right, but I didn't have enough confidence in it to put it in. Actually, I did want to put it in, but I just lost the page. And I just recently, I just found it. After I saw what happened, I'm like, oh, I gotta go find that. I remember writing it. And now I found it. I said it. Cool. I need another potion, my HP was below 10. Alright, so now let's talk about all the other stuff we've seen. Chapter 212. That was a good chapter. That was a good chapter. It was the most romantic chapter we have seen in the entire show so far. Jin Wu and Cha Hain. That was nice. I really enjoyed that. Very, very romantic. Gave me some ideas. So, let's see, where are we starting here? Alright. Sorry about the background noise, guys. It's really hot, so I gotta keep the windows open and gotta have a fan on at all times. All right, so I'm just gonna read some of the stuff we uh, found out and then comment on it. So the Shadow Lord, the Shadow Sovereign said some cryptic stuff to uh, Jin Wu. He said, this is our beginning and the end, and also your beginning. So we can speculate on what that means in a second here. So, who's the mysterious being in stealth that blocked the Beast and Frost Sovereign's attacks on Jin Wu? You already know. It's gotta be Papa Song. Finally, making an appearance. Yosh. I don't know if he's gonna be uh, the Dragon Sovereign. That's kind of hard to believe, but that would be nuts. He's definitely powerful. Beyond regular S-Class. Actually, what was that guy's name? Hong Suk or whatever? Uh... He was beyond S-Class, so he was pretty strong, and then Jin Wu's dad was way stronger, so. And I'd have to believe that Jin Wu's dad could beat Thomas Andre, just by, you know, the, what, what the show has been hinting at about this guy. So he's got to be a sovereign. There's no one else stronger than Thomas Andre who's, like, regular at all. Or he could be some kind of awakened fragment, or... He could be um, a player, but I highly doubt that. That seems like it was a, some kind of, uh, sha what do you call it, <laughs> business agreement between the Shadow Sovereign and the Architect. And I guess the Architect was that angel statue. And that's also what the Shadow Sovereign used to look like. But was the angel statue really there? Was, he, was that really a monster, or was he being controlled by someone? 
that shadow statue, that shadow statue, that angel statue is pretty dumb. So there's no way the shadow sovereign was controlling it, unless the shadow sovereign was acting ignorant on purpose through it. But no, 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 nope, nope. So I'm not sure. I'm not sure about that yet. Yeah. So if that's Jin Wu's dad, then I got a theory. I got a theory. All right. So first, it was light and dark. Nothing else. However, apparently the absolute being existed. That's a little already a little bit weird. It said when light and dark existed and nothing else, the absolute being did something. Okay, well where's the absolute being? It said it said later, as long as the absolute being existed, they would suffer. And then they killed it. But here it says light and dark existed, nothing else. But then also, apparently the absolute being existed. So that's kind of cryptic too. I don't think it's translation error. I went and read other translations and it was very similar. So, well anyways, light was split. Oh, sorry, sorry, go back a little bit. That's not the only contradiction about this absolute being. So we're gonna check that out and see if we can form a theory about this. Light was split into angels. Well, it says emissaries, but that means messenger, basically, and angel, literally. Yeah, yeah, so emissaries means messenger. So angel literally means messenger of God in Hebrew. So I'll just call them angels. Darkness split into eight sovereigns. Now, <laughs> sorry, I'm kind of stumbling my words. I'm reading off like some notes that I have, but my writing isn't that good because I write really fast. It's good if I write slow and so, sorry. But this is just, uh, we're just saying things, we're getting some points out there and then we're gonna make some theories. So, bear with me. Heeding the commands issued from birth, sovereigns born to destroy worlds and angels born to maintain or protect worlds began killing each other over and over again. The most bright fragment of the brilliant light asked the absolute being. So I'm gonna stop there for a second. What that tells us is the Shadow Sovereign wasn't the most brilliant light. He wasn't the most brightest fragment. So that's pretty interesting. The brightest fragment, you know, the most blessed of God, the most blessed angel of God was the very one who rebelled. Got some biblical undertones here, that's pretty cool. All right, so he goes on to say, oh, our ruler, our absolute ruler, why don't you help your faithful subjects fighting in your honor? Why do you ignore our pain? Do you really not hear the screams of countless subjects dying in your honor? Help us, lend us strength, and we'll cut off our opponent's head and offer them as a tribute to your glory. However, the absolute being didn't reply to the brightest fragment. Then it came to realize the truth. It's all for the absolute being's entertainment. It didn't want the battles to end. The absolute being was the emissary's ruler. So this brings me to a point. How about reproduction. Think about it, those tree monsters that first showed up in Japan, right before all the gates disappeared, they reproduced, and they reproduced big time. So we have to assume all monsters reproduce, except sovereigns themselves. They seem to reincarnate, realizing the war will never end as long as the absolute ro uh, being existed. So if the war continued on forever, over and over and they made this clear they literally said forever uh, multiple times throughout this talking about this war like it would never end unless something changed so um, and I do have a theory at the end of this a very very good one and I hope it's right so here we go they have to reproduce somehow these rulers the subjects not the rulers not the rulers themselves but the subjects of the rulers, their underlings, the, all those winged creatures we've seen coming out of the massive gate in the system playback, those things are able to reproduce. Giants are able to reproduce. 
uh, beasts, demons, all of them, somehow, they reproduce. So, I just want to get that out of the way. Now, realizing the war will never end as long as the absolute being existed, the fragments fell into despair. The despair they felt transformed into rage, and soon, hatred. To end this meaningless war, they unsheathed their blades. That was the start of rebellion. Oh, there was one other thing. The way it phrased it back when it said, let me see here. Do 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 do. Um. When it said, however, the absolute being didn't reply to the brightest fragment. Then it came to realize the truth. It is all for the absolute being's entertainment. The way it says that in the in the light novel, I read that over and over again. And then when I was thinking about it, that the absolute being didn't reply to it. So how did this thing real? What what this what the brightest fragment realized was a perceived truth. It was the truth he perceived. But I'm going to prove to you that it's something totally different was happening. So that really wasn't the absolute truth. And that's where the story is trying to trick us. We want, we, the story wants us to think that was the truth. But we're going to get deeper into this. Okay, so where was I? Um, yes, they unsheathed their blades and that was the start of the rebellion. Then one fragment of the most brilliant light and his personal army stood in front of the rebels blocking their march. A six-winged angel. That was the Shadow Sovereign's original appearance. He was the only angel still fighting for his creator. All his soldiers quickly were killed. He also died there, but stayed loyal nonetheless to the end. He reawakened from inside the abyss, realizing God had hidden a certain power in him. Okay, we're getting... We're getting further down the line here. This all has meaning, and I think I figured it out. So the, this is the Shadow Sovereign awakened, and he realized, see, here's another being, realizing something apart from the absolute being telling them the exact truth. So the Shadow uh, Sovereign realized that God had hidden a power in him for this eventual cause. Ah, it says, quote unquote, for the eventuality when all would go wrong. So if this absolute being is so absolute and so epic and it can create all this amazing worlds and creatures out of just light and dark when nothing else existed, how could it just sit there and let itself get slain? There's evidence that it fought back and yet it was too weak to beat its own creatures. Something is seriously wrong, but actually that's where we get our theory from, okay? So, this, this is the Shadow Lord's quote-unquote realization. This is his assumption of what happened. So he woke up in the abyss. He realized that God had hidden this power in him for the eventuality when all would go wrong. So, God knew this would happen and he couldn't prevent it or even try? I don't think so. Was it somehow not able to answer the angel? It seems pretty suspicious. So yeah, we got a couple options here. We're going to get into what I'm talking about a lot deeper in a second, but think about it. When the angel asked him a question, was it able to answer? Obviously the angel was expecting an answer. So we're thinking yes, it could have answered if it wanted to. But it's still pretty suspicious. So obviously it didn't answer for a reason. And it let itself die. The Shadow Sovereign tore off the remaining traces of its wings. That's interesting, and uh, yeah, that's interesting. So, and then it crafted brand new armor out of the surrounding darkness. What? He, the Shadow Lord is just like crafted armor out of the darkness? How is that possible? And then I remembered when Jin Wu first met him, uh, when Jin Wu first met him face to face, he's just like imagined a tree growing in this humongous tree like 12 stories tall like way bigger than that just grew 
out of nowhere. And then he, then he imagined a train going by, and he wanted to see it, and a, just a train just shot by out of nowhere. So, and he said, this is my realm. This is my territory. So the Shattered Sovereign made an armor like that, I'm guessing. But it's interesting, he was able to bring that armor into, like, some co the Chaos world, and into the human world and stuff. Um, and out of the darkness. So, when the Shadow King returned, it was all over. He took so long crafting his dang armor out of the darkness that God was already dead. No good. But anyways, this makes no sense. Unless we can come up with a theory. But, oh, it's great. I love it so much. This is such an awesome story. The fragments had become gods and turned themselves into rulers. Now, they took the might of the absolute being and they turned it into tools and with those tools they were hunting the sovereigns the shadow sovereign tried to team up with the other sovereigns but they have a little falling out but first let's talk about this when <clears throat> the king of giants got caught this the sovereigns made a huge deal out of it now you're gonna you're gonna think this is funny too so like, oh, it was such a big deal. The Sovereigns realized the severity of the situation and all that stuff. But, you know, first of all, they put him in a dungeon. All he was was chained up, wasn't weakened or anything. All he had to do was take these chains off him. They put him in a dungeon, the rulers, and released him into Human World. Any of the Sovereigns that were in Human World at the time could have just gone there and released him. There was so much time before Jin Wu got there. There was already sovereigns on Earth who could even use gates and go anywhere they wanted freely. So why didn't they go and immediately free the King of Giants? But think about this, Jin Wu's dad was there before Jin Wu. Jin Wu's dad was there watching the gate break happen. So was he guarding it? In case another sovereign came, he only wanted Jin Wu to go in. He told the other sovereign, stay away. I am the sovereign of Berserk Dragons. No, that would be awesome. I don't have enough evidence to suggest that yet, but I'm thinking. I'm thinking it's possible. But then, how did Jin Wu's dad get the power to be able to be the host for the sovereign of dragons, you know? I think when he got locked in the dungeon, he went back to Chaos World, and I think just being in Chaos World will either kill a human or give you some savage reawakening, and then that made him suitable to be the host of the Sovereign of Berserk Dragons. Now, we got some more to go. We have not formed a theory yet, but we're gonna get it. Now, rulers have tools to kill sovereigns made from God's might. Jin Wu can kill sovereigns. Is that because Jin Wu has the power of a sovereign so he can kill other sovereigns? I think Jin Wu's system is quote unquote God's gift, like Gogun He said. So when the absolute being died, did it go to the abyss? Think about that. The absolute being died. So did it go to the abyss? Everything goes to the abyss when it dies. If it can die, it goes to the abyss. They've made that very clear. Of course, it had to have gone to the abyss if it died. So then, why didn't the Shadow Lord see it in the abyss? Now, it starts to make sense, you see. The Shadow Lord just assumed he must have been, the absolute being must have been so great it couldn't go to the abyss, but he also assumed that what he had in him that is the Shadow Sovereign, what he had in him was uh, like a hidden gift from the Absolute Being. But this is where it gets cool. That was where the Shadow Sovereign came from. He merged somewhat with the Absolute Being. He died, then the Absolute Being followed him to the Abyss and awoke him. His only loyal servant, brave enough to die for him, among the fragments of the most brilliant light, the 
only one who had absolute trust in his creator to the point of death. The absolute being stayed quiet to test them and one passed the test. And now that one will restore things and revive the absolute being in the end. It will tell Jean Wu something like, all quests complete, you've won the game. That would be savage. What if at the end of this show, Jin Wu gets a, a message, you've completed the game, you've won. All quests complete. And his title is like, <laughs> the one who revived a god or something. Oh man. That's gonna be crazy. Alright, so now let me sum up for you everything that I've said here in a brief nutshell. The most brilliant fragment asked the absolute being, why don't you help us? Don't you see our suffering? And it stayed quiet on purpose. It was a test. And then it assumed something was the truth. It assumed that it was all for the absolute being's entertainment. However, the absolute being was testing its subjects, waiting to see who would be loyal to it and who wouldn't be among its own people. And that's why it made the sovereigns. It made the sovereigns to to create this controversy and then so it could test its own people. The sovereigns were serving that purpose for it, the absolute being. And only one, only one of the fragments stood up for the absolute being and just fought a losing battle right to its death. And then it died faithful to the creator. It was reawakened in the abyss by the time it made it back out into the chaos world the absolute being had already been killed its fragments had already been mined but obviously the absolute being is not going to die that easily it had a plan to reward its loyal servant the only one and you know if a bunch more stayed loyal to him it might have been a different story, but since only one stayed loyal to him, to the point of death, the absolute being rewarded him more than all the rest of them. It let the other ones have what they wanted, namely rulership. And guess what? They still haven't ended the war with the sovereigns yet. Because the shadow sovereign came out and their plan backfired. Now the rulers are going to get what's coming to them through Jin Wu, aka the shadow sovereign. And the absolute being is most likely the system itself. Just getting to know Jin Wu and having fun. And yeah, I don't know if there's anything left to predict. Let me think about it for a second. Then we'll call it a quits here. So if the King of Giants was just sitting there waiting to be released into the world, why didn't he? Well, Jin Wu's dad was guarding it so that the other sovereigns couldn't come close. So is Jin Wu's dad working for the rulers? It would seem that way. But it kept referring to the two sovereigns that all the other ones were scared of. And that was the Shadow Sovereign, of course. He's a major wild card to, to them. They're like, he just came out of nowhere, basically. And then it was the, the dragon. Uh, the sovereign of Berserk Dragons. And... Why is the shadow of <laughs> why is the sovereign of Berserk Dragon such a wild card? Just his crazy power? Well, maybe he has a deal going on with the rulers. Just like uh, the shadow sovereign made some kind of deal with the architect. Yeah, so where's that architect come in? I really don't know yet. I feel like the absolute being is connected to the shadow sovereign. The shadow sovereign's connected to Jin Wu. Jin Wu is basically communicating with God. And it's funny, because think about this. Jin Wu always tries to talk to the system. And what happens? It stays quiet. But then Jin Wu doesn't go and do really bad stuff either. He stays good. Just like the Shadow Lord. He didn't care if his creator stayed quiet. He stayed loyal. So, have we got some connections? Yes. What's gonna happen next? I'm not exactly sure, but I'm so stoked to find out. Solo leveling is freaking awesome. Keep leveling up, Gene Wu. We love you.
peak. Oh yeah, and just to get back to what the Shadow Sovereign told Jin Wu in the first place, this is our beginning and end, and also your beginning. So, Jin Wu is like legitly the Shadow Sovereign. Now, the torch has been passed. The Shadow Sovereign is Jin Wu. He's entering Jin Wu and they're gonna combine. And Jin Wu has the system. And I don't know if the Shadow Sovereign used to have the system or not. That would be nuts. And then he gave it to Jin Wu. He chose a successor. So I think the Shadow Sovereign knew his days were short and he used the architect to choose a successor and he handed over that gift that the God gave him when he was reawakened in the abyss to Jin Wu and inside Jin Wu it manifested as the system. Yes. Man, this is really similar to Toriko in so many different ways. I like that. I mean it's totally different, the terminology in the world and stuff, but the aspects of it, a lot of it's the same. And I think that's so awesome. And I like anything with biblical undertones or any kind of ancient scrolls or uh, ancient mysteries or things about deities or gods and stuff. I think it's that's like a really cool aspect to a story. And yeah. So the, the whole god aspect, they don't get into that in Toriko. They just leave it in case there's another season. I wish there would be another season, but hopefully they explore it fully in solo leveling. Man, that would be great. If it had the one thing Toriko left out, that'd be awesome. So anyways, solo leveling, best of the best. Let's see if any of these theories come true. Thanks guys, thanks for hanging out with me. I'll see you next time. Later.